I just wanted to do a little first look to give you an idea of how this is going to work. I did a lot of research. Uh, RWG Research uh, built a coil winder grass and a few others and I kind of looked at what everybody else is doing and built something similar but there are a few changes that make it a little easier to deal with. The top here these are off of a solid door you can get them at the hardware store. The rollers for the track so they have their own bearing they're already pressed together and that's from a roller skate it's the shaft from the from a skate wheel from a inline skate wheel put a bearing here and this is a spring a lot of these parts came off an inkjet printer these are the rollers in on the shaft that roll the paper and it's also this is this was kind of hard to put, get it on there but basically that's one of these right here and I pulled it apart wide enough to stick it on a gear and then I uh, super glued it to the gear so this is rolling on the side and that made it workable so I could take it apart and I didn't have to run a belt all the way around the whole thing because this is just a flat plate of uh, polycarbonate there's really no way to put a belt around it and uh, this simplified it and I could make it smaller and I didn't have to rely on using a rim that was a set size I could make it the size I wanted it so it made the whole rig a little bit smaller and it, there's enough room to clear a good three inch core it really wasn't a problem this is about as small as you can make it though so we're talking about a two foot base roughly the diameter of the ring is eight inches and uh, this motor is off of a uh, it's an 18 volt drill I'm running it at 12 right now but that's still kind of fast I want to be able to control the speed so I'm going to use a FET to control the speed I'm running it at 12 volts for the example though this is a walking pedometer and this is a kind of a cheaper one which actually works better because it doesn't have that error correction if any of you have tried to do this before these pedometers the, a good one will correct so, say you're jostling it around and it's getting a false reading it will actually eliminate count to ensure that it's a step and not being jostled around and this one won't do that so it works really well for this application because the ring has to travel all the way around eight inches before it's triggered so I just run that up and this is a reed switch back here how this works sorry I ain't got my headset on but this right here you lift that up and this whole ring comes off so there's there's the reed switch it makes it real easy to change these rings I've actually been looking at using this as a ring as well which is just a, a grounding rod that I'm going to connect together that'll fit inside of that so if I'm, I'm rolling a really small core I can make it small enough to work this is just these L shapes support the core I'll show you in a minute this is spring loaded to allow this to adjust the tension on this to compensate is I just put a rod across here with a spring and this adds tension to the front edge of that keep it in the groove basically my first attempt I used a AC motor and I came out of this hole and it was geared so it run a little slower I was riding on this edge with a wheel I cut out of an old skate wheel and it worked but I wasn't too happy because the more pressure I put on this the more it distorted it riding in these grooves it would slip once in a while and that really wasn't what I needed so you know the best solution is sometimes just a right angle of what your first conclusion this is a way to do that because the tension on these it, where this is rested in this little wheel here in the cutaway adds just enough tension so when I'm pushing on this side this thing will fly so that's kind of the way it's running here and you can see this counter here is uh, fairly good So 
I plan on slowing it down a little bit. When you're winding little thin wire, and the, especially because I'll be going through the center of the core of a, a, a normal stator, I have to go through this little thin area. But basically I have to go through this loop here and uh, in order to wind this. So I got vinyl to put in here and then this is going to get coated with uh, silicone rubber. And also I'm going to stick a piece of vinyl on this and then I'll heat seal a little flap across that. But the silicone rubber will, will bind those two pieces together as an insulator on the core because the thing's going to be above 5 kilovolts. So it's, I got to insulate it against that current. Now I'm breaking it down into smaller coils which should li help limit that high voltage. Uh, thanks Canada. So anyway, uh, that's the winder and I will release a, a video and some information on the changes I made in order for anyone else who may want to build one in order to wind a QEG. It looks like it's big enough. I'll have to do some more measurements in the next video where I'm going to show it running on uh, winding a, coil, a core. I'll make sure that those dimensions will work. If not, this ring would just have to be maybe an inch bigger. It's a lot more portable this way. You can put it on a shelf and get it out of your way. It's not a floor model. So um, keep bear in mind this is really crappy wire. It's not straight. It's just something I've been using to test this with. So see th these windings here because this has to go in between these grooves. Um, that's not very good. Um, but I'll be running that a lot slower than that to wind that. But if I was winding a a normal core, these right here, I would put a washer under them, take one of these, move it to the back, and then I could swivel the front back and forth to allow me to wind it. So here we go one more time. Uh -huh.